Hey everybody, this is David at Barnyard Bees. It's a beautiful day out today. It's this sunny, the rain has finally quit. It's cold, it's 43 degrees right now. I just see a bee here and there coming out of the box so there's not many at all coming out. It's really, really cold. The sun's starting to warm up the side of the boxes a little bit. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon. So there's very, very little to no activity whatsoever. And I'm surprised there's even any out flying now. But, uh, and actually there's a, there's actually a couple over here on the pollen feeder. I'm surprised to even see them out this cold. There's a few right there. We had a pretty good frost last night. So what that means is if you're feeding pollen, they will now start taking the pollen a lot better because the goldenrod will diminish from the freezing and the cold temperatures and there'll be very little of it from now on depending where you're at in the country. The wind's blowing really hard. Those northern winds are still blowing in. It was uh, 30 some degrees this morning, a really a hard frost here in North Georgia. And I just wanted to show you that for a second, but what I really wanted to talk about, the number one question that I get on my YouTube videos, and especially the one, uh, I have one video, it's got over 10 million views, and uh, it's, it's about a queen, about, about them attacking and killing a queen. And uh, I'll try to put it up in the right hand corner if you want to check that video out. I'm sure most of you have probably seen it. But the number one question that people ask, how do you not get stung? I get that question asked more than any other question. And I thought, well, I'm just, it's every day, every single day, about half of the questions are, how do you not get stung? Well, I thought I'd go over that a little bit, especially for the new beekeeper and people that's inspiring to be beekeepers and people that's worried about getting stung and what you can do to limit the number of stings that you get and especially if you have a fear of bees what's the best thing you can do what's the best ways you can approach the bees what's the best time you can approach the bees what type of bees and that's what i'm going to talk about today so right now would be a very bad time which you wouldn't do it because you you don't want to break propolis as little as possible unless it's just an absolute emergency this time of year so uh, you, you don't want to get into your hives now because they got it they got them sealed up but anyway if you did get in there now would be a really really bad time those bees are going to be very very angry not a good time to get into your bees timing is everything when it comes to calmness of bees uh, timing and then another big thing is the type of bees that you have we have a we run italians that's all we run i don't fool with russians or cornelians except just a little mix there's a little cornelian mix in ours with the italian but other than that that's what we run uh, i know russians uh, some people may argue about that i've never owned them so i can't really judge and say how well they behave i just hear that they're really aggressive and mean and i've never tried them and, and i don't want to uh, another thing is the genetics of your bees well if you run italians and you run a very calm genetic bee that will also help you about not getting stung so and I've done videos of this before, and a lot of people say, and here's, a, here's what everyone uh, that debates me about this say, say. They say, well, you got little nukes. They're not going to sting you because they're small. So then I make a video on big highs with four supers on, shaking the bees off the honey frames with no bee suit on, nothing, to show them that our bees are common. Yes, I can work big highs just the same as I do these nukes and we do it all the time at at most the only thing I ever ever wear is a veil I've not put a bee suit on in years now that's going through big hives little hives and the bees are calm in general but what a lot of people don't realize and know and maybe they just don't know bees like they think they do is 
there's the right timing also means a lot. Your genetic B means a lot. And I do both. I, I make sure I go into them at the right time of the year. When a honey flow is on, bees are super friendly gentle. That's the best time you can go into those hives. When there's a honey flow on, midday, when it's just hot as can be. Hot as, if it's 90 degrees, bees are happy. They're out flying around, uh, collecting nectar. If it was 90, it's usually not 90 during nectar flow, but if it was, uh, the bees would be happy-go-lucky. And honey flow in our area runs late March, April, and May. April being the prime. Usually about mid mid April is the best you ever get as far as a ne a nectar flow coming in. So that's an excellent time to go through your bees. Uh, don't pick days that are uh, if you don't want to get stung. Don't pick days that are cloudy and dreary and cool or rainy or in the evening or early morning. That's other times that bees can tend to be a little bit more mean and aggressive. Uh, now I got an older video. See, I, I don't make videos on my big highs because I just I'm not a honey puller much. We don't hardly pull much honey in our uh, big big highs that we do have in the other yards. We do a little bit, but not much. And I'm not the one that does the pulling, except when I've done these uh, four right up here that are sitting. And that's the only ones I really do. We have somebody else that actually pulls the honey. But when I go up there and go through and check them. Uh, the bees are gentle they're super gentle and i got an old video you can see the hives lined up there's about uh, 20 or 30 lined up in a row and if i can find that video i'll post it on there as well and and also i'll post a video of the when i was going through the honey of these big hives so it's not an issue of big hives people say that all the time but i proved that over in the video and when i do they still say it so just watch the videos and then you decide for yourself are the bees uh, just nice because they're in nukes or because uh, we go through the, the big hives as well. So, so that's the bottom line truth. So uh, if you are an aspiring beekeeper and you are a little bit worried, that's okay too because just about everyone starts with a full bee suit and gloves. And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't be ashamed of that. And if that's something that you always want to do, that's just fine as well. Uh, the state inspectors come up here last week. They all had full bee suits on. Well, at least they had the, the smock, the, the, top, the top part. And uh, some people are just cautious and, and they just don't want to get stung no matter how long they've been in it. And that's okay. It, it, but on the other hand, if you see somebody that's going through their hive without protection, then have that same courtesy and to them and say that's okay as well just you know treat them with the same respect so now another thing <clears throat> that I explain to people uh, and I know this by experience because we go through so many bees uh, there's 240 nukes out here in the prime time of spring when all 240 of these are hopping super good and a lot of bees moving uh, there goes the geese. Uh, when you go through a hive, and you may go through hive number two, then hive number three, and you may take a sting, and then hive number four, you'll take another sting. And as those stings accumulate, and the further you go, the worse it's going to get. And a lot of people can answer the reason for that before I even tell you. Some of you already know. And as you go further and further, working the hives the more and the more you get stung and and you, you'll step back and you you think why are they doing this because they started off so calm but now they're mean why did they do that well the reason being when you get one sting and then you get two and then you get three the pheromone accumulates you get more and more and they react more so every time you open up a hive they're gonna react because of that smell now that's one reason not to ever wear the same clothes when you go to your bee yard. And if you wear a bee suit, wash it often. Don't let it just accumulate stings over and over and over and over. you always have bees that are attacking you. Same way with a veil. I've had to throw away veils because they would just, they got to where they had so much pheromone on them 
and I've had to stop in the middle of work in the yard and go up to the house and change out completely all my clothes and get a new veil, rub down with alcohol where I did get stung, come back and the bees were completely different. They're just like you start all over again. So that's another thing that can help. And some, maybe other beekeepers don't know that, that, that those pheromones will accumulate and they'll get worse and worse and worse. It's, it's the volume, when you work the volume this many bees, you pick up a little stuff like that and learn because you're constantly seeing, uh, studying the bees and learning from them. And I've learned that over, well, it didn't take me long to learn that because I didn't want to keep getting stung over and over. So after working about an hour or two, I'll go up and change my clothes, rub down with alcohol, come back out and put a new veil on and good to go. So that's just a, a few little tips for, for people asking how, how come I don't get stung. But I do get stung. It's not that I don't get stung. And also too, fear plays a big factor in that. That's another thing I should mention. Bees know just like a mean dog would know or a mean chicken or anything that's gonna attack you. If you walk up to that hive scared, you're in danger already. So they sense that. Animals can sense fear and they will react to it. I think with bees, when you show your fear, I think it, they think they're in danger. But when you go in there calm and cool and, and you know, bee stings, you just reach down and scrape the stinger off and keep going, uh, the bees react a lot, a lot better. Yeah, I mean, you start swatting the bees in the air and, and running and from them, you're gonna get stung. <laughs> That's just how it is with bees or any animal as far as that goes. So that's about it. That's just a few tips I wanted to put out. Uh, don't forget, uh, November 23rd, our Coffee Bee Chat. Anyone interested in coming and learning about bees and, and questions like that, we'll, we'll be there to answer for you. And it's uh, for the new beekeepers that's inspiring to get into beekeeping. Come talk to us and we can even help you get set up for your uh, new hives. It's a good time then because we've got our Christmas uh, sale going on right then. We're going to have a lot of, lot of real good deals. I'm telling you, there's nobody out there that can beat these prices that we're going to offer. So here in about a week or two, we're going to start, uh, I'll start, I'll make a video and I'll start putting the products on there and showing you what we're going to have on sale that day. So don't forget folks, click on the little bell, like and help share our videos and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Barnard Beast.